I think we're rolling. Good afternoon. It's an afternoon, the little half well, halfway toward 4th of July. 4th of July is tomorrow. Today's Monday. It's the uh, 3rd of July. So happy 4th. Cheers. Listening, listening to some rock and bully before. But I just have an announcement. I'm sure most vinyl community folks know. Thanks for stopping in again. Um, I hope you're enjoying our segments. If, like I indicated some of my comments, if you have any topics you'd like me to go over, if you'd like to see some OG pressings that I think are uh, have superior sound, uh, drop me a note. I may have it. I may have some insight into those um, those records that sound great. A lot of the old records sound great because they're they're um, recorded with with a tube chain, tube mic, tube tube. Um, mixing board transferred to tube from tape all analog etc cetera, etc cetera. but today i just want to talk about uh something i read a few weeks ago and i'm finally getting around to it that bill wyman the legendary bass player for the rolling stones i believe he's either 86 years old right now hasn't been with the stones for 30 years is going to reunite with the Stones for some uh, studio se session on their new album, which is a tribute to Charlie Watts. I think Mick invited him, and uh, some sources indicate that I've read that, you know, Bill loved Charlie, and he couldn't say no to uh, a tribute to Charlie record. Also on the record is uh, Sir Ringo and Sir Paul McCartney, I'm not sure who else as far as guests. I know uh, the drummer is, uh, will be some sessions that they had recorded with, uh, with Charlie. So Charlie will be on the album. And I'm, and I'm guessing that the track that Bill would, would, is going to play on somehow, Miracle of Dubbing, he'll be with Charlie and the rest of the, uh, rest of the guys, uh, the rest of the band, Mick, you know, Ronnie, and Keith. Um, so that's the announcement. I'm just going to uh, talk a little bit about, about Bill Wyman. We all we all love Bill Wyman. It's been 30 years. Hard to believe for for a, a guy like me. Because I remember when I bought this album, uh, Steel Wheels, which was 19... It was released in August of 1989, Steel Wheels. And this was the last record that Bill Wyman was on, studio record that Bill Wyman was on with the Rolling Stones. Here we have the live triple release that was out a few years ago. Uh, well, actually, it's a, a four-record set uh, from Atlantic City, and this was also a pay-per-view special. And I remember that. Guest stars, guest uh, players, rather, clapped in. Uh, John Lee Hooker, Al Axel Rose, and uh, you know a few other people. But this was in Atlantic City. This was a big event. This was this was a pay per view concert, and, and I remember, excuse me, I remember uh, purchasing that and uh, taping it. I still have the VHS tape when we used to tape things on VHS, and so, some of you still do. So I still have that. So that's thirty years, just about. And um, since I'm talking about Bill, just want to show this book if you have a chance to uh, see if it's available, a, a used copy. This is a 2001 first U.S. edition. It was, um, I think, uh, DK Books, uh, our, uh, our U.K. publishing company. But this was the first American edition. And this is... The History of American Blues, which is the only blues, really, but the origin of blues, and Bill Wyman uh, calls this blues, blues Odyssey, a journey to music's heart and soul, and we have a sign on it, Clarksdale, Memphis, Rosedale, and uh, Bill goes through everyone here uh, when he breaks it down into sections, and you also have labels. You also have uh, what guitars the artist used. Um, you know, it goes on and on. It's uh, it's a it's really a fabulous book. 
I've had this, uh, I guess, over 20 years. So uh, I'm also going to show uh, some Bill Wyman solo records that I have. Um, I don't have all of them, I'm sure. I didn't look up his discography, but these are the ones that I, I bought when they when they were new. Uh, here is uh, Great Rock and Roll with Bill Wyman, Willie and the Poor Boys. If you knew when um, after Bill left the Stones, he uh, actually got a super group together. This has Charlie Watts on, as a matter of fact, with uh, Andy Fairweather, Lowe, uh, Mickey G, Bill Wyman on bass, Ray Cooper, who plays with uh, Elton John, Paul Rogers is on here, Kenny Rog uh, Kenny Jones, uh, Chris Ree, Willie Garnett, Jimmy Page. Uh, so this is a really cool record. It's uh, I see it online. This is an original with the uh, sticker from the department store. And another one of my favorite Bill Wyman records is Monkey Grip. Solo record by Will, by Bill. And uh, here's the inner, part inner. And all songs are here written by Bill and arranged by Bill. And I'll show you the label. It's got the Rolling Stones label. Pretty cool label, Monkey Grip. Typical Stones monkey theme. Here is it, CC on Rockstar, a great big multi platinum seller for Bill. Uh, this is the 12 inch with Rio de Janeiro on it as well. And this sounds really good if you could pick this up. And you can see this was uh, an original $3.35. And uh, I'll show you the label. It's on AM. At that point, so that's what I have for Bill. Even though this is a Bill, little Bill segment, I thought I'd extend it and show uh, Stones, Rolling Stones solo records, and some other surprises, some rare ones that I have uh, regarding the Stones. Here we have a Keith Richards' latest uh, reissue on Record Store Day. Vintage, vintage Winos. This is a uh, three-sided set with the fourth side etched. You can see the hype sticker there. This was from Record Store Day. I was happy to get this. I'm a big fan of Keith's solo stuff. Uh, Keith only gets really a track or two, um, the, newer, the newer records, a track or two uh, to sing lead. And, um, you know, we all love his stuff from Exile and, and you know, some other tunes, um, you know, Happy. Here's a Keith Richards original, Talk is Cheap. Uh, this is a great record. Get a chance, uh, pick this one up. Those fingers are a little, they're crooked there, but 20, 25 years after this was done, they're, they're actually more arthritic, and it's amazing how he could still uh, manage to navigate a guitar neck and, and do it. And he's like focused on it. He's locked in. Uh, here's another one, a great record that came out a few years ago. Keith Richards, Cross-Eyed Heart, and Jordan, Steve Jordan's on this with him. Uh, they're now the drummer for the Stones or tours with the Stones as well. There's the gatefold. This is a really nice presentation. That's Keith solo. And here we have, uh, don't forget, Ronnie. Ronnie Wood solo record, which is, I've got my album to do. This was a $1.99 cutout. This is a great record. And it's got the, the look of the faces there. Same hairdo. Here's another great Ronnie Wood. Give me some neck. And the artwork on here, I believe, is Ronnie. And uh, like I said in one of my videos, uh, Annie Leibovitz is actually a photographer on this session. I'm not sure what her contribution was. It could be some of the photos that were in here or, you know, just the entire concept. So that's the inner. That's Ronnie. Give me some neck. 
And here we have some Mick solo, Lucky in Love. And Mick did a lot of duets with people like Bowie and, and things like that. But here's Lucky in Love. This is a 12-inch uh, A and B side. It's a dance mix, dub mix, and single mix. This is from She's the Boss LP. If I'm going too fast, slow me down. I'm just trying to hold them up so you can actually freeze out if you want. Here's a, a, a one I don't see too often. Mick Jagger, Let's Work. Let's Work, Catch as Catch Can. And this is a 12-inch dance mix. This is a promo. You see the promo sticker. Promo stamp, rather, on back. And I'll show you the record. On Columbia. That's mint. Here we have She's the Boss LP with the hype. Hard Woman, Half a Loaf, Lucky in Love, Lonely at the Top. Great album. Charlie also had solo records. Charlie Watts, the late great Charlie Watts. More in the in the jazz tradition, uh, with with uh, big bands and small uh, small bands, you know, bass, guitar, drums, you know, maybe some horns. He was, as you know, he was a jazz aficionado. Always considered himself a jazz drummer. And if you you know, with the little kit, if you watch him, he's it's amazing what he could contribute it with just that small drum kit. But he was so quick. And his um, his beats are just unbelievable because if you think about you know some of the epic records like um, "Can't Always Get What You Want," "Give Me Shelter," it was, you know just a uh, "Undercover the Night." The percussion and the drums are just amazing. Uh, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna change speeds a little bit uh, with Stone solos, but it's contributing to uh, the, the Stones family. This is Chris Jagger. Solo record. This is Mick's brother, Chris Jagger. And on the back, you'll see that he had, he resembles in this particular pose and style of dress and hair. He actually resembles Mick quite a bit. Uh, here's one that's still sealed. Chris Jagger, The Adventures of Valentine Vox, The Ventriloquist. Uh, another weird one. And on here is Dave Edmonds and Peter Frampton. They both contribute. And I was talking about Charlie's solo. So I did have a few of Charlie's solo CDs. Um, easier to find. I don't have the vinyl, and the vinyl must be rare, so rare. I've, I've never come across it. Never seen it, but the records a record store would be up on the wall. But he does have a number of solo uh, projects, and there's some there's a, a couple of uh, rare ones I want to show. This is nice. This is a sample from London on mono. It's uh, America's Greatest Hitmakers, and this is a you can see it features. The Rolling Stones, and I believe this is the first time the Beatles made it to an American release prior to their record coming out. And this had on it, uh, surprise, surprise, it has zombies, nothing's changed, it has them, little girl, it has Lulu, it has uh, Katie, Kathy Kirby, Tom Jones, Kiss Kiss. Uh, Dave Barry, The Bachelors, The uh, Apple Jacks. But it's it's funny because this America's Greatest Hits Makers was also on a Rolling Stone record, which pro is probably their first record. So uh, I believe this is a promo sampler. It's not in, the jacket's not in great condition. Well, I would think it's in great condition. You could see there. Pretty cool cover. And this is the red London label. 
very nice. Uh, I would say VG, VG plus. But I remember playing it, and fidelity is unbelievable. And this is a mono, um, as you can see, mono. I have uh, a few, another one I just pulled out when I was looking through. Baroque and Stones, the new Renaissance Society. I dig the stones. And um, it's a nice gatefold. I've never seen this anywhere else. If you have seen it, please comment, let me know. That's the label. And this is an extremely rare one. A good friend of mine gave me this uh, a few years ago. He says, I got a Stones record for you. You might be interested. Um, I don't know what it is. I didn't play it. I don't have a machine. I said, yeah, you know, let me see. I'll, I'll of course, um, you know, I'll, I'll take it off your hands. I, you know, I collect records. You knew that. And this was it. It's Exceptional Risk Advisors established 2007. And what this is is uh, an advertisement. It's for an ad agency, and they actually use the Stones logo. I'm um, not sure if they they received permission. Here's the uh, the paperwork, the press kit. But it's uh, greatest hits. It has um, songs on it, but the songs are interpreted um, for educational purposes for those in the uh, advertisement and insurance business. Um, so it has uh, so, so really interesting, but this is what's cool about it. It's a picture disc. So, and it says here, record year for their business. Uh, the back is, is blank. So I believe this was not licensed I'm not sure, but that's all I know about it. If anybody knows anything about it, that's it. Exceptional risk advisors for the insurance industry. So that's basically it. I just wanted to let you guys know. If you don't know, you know the announcement that will be returning. And um, I'm sure from what I read, there's no title yet to to the album. It's their first album since uh, the first new stuff since the Big Bang. The uh, last uh, Lonesome Blues record that they did was covers. So this is, I believe, new material uh, from Keith and Mick. And who knows if Ronnie's contributing songs or whatever. And the last record that they did that was released was Ghost during the COVID uh, epidemic or pandemic. And I have that. That's a 10-inch uh, single, which is cool. I didn't show that, but I have that. So that's the last one. So it's been 30 years since Bill's, uh, you know, tracked a, a record with the band. So it should be it should be great. And it's uh, we, we didn't th we everyone thinks they're they always get these these guys are good friends are going to play together, even though they may, maybe not on a tour, but. You know, and, and for a record or 45 or single, but um, it, it took 30 years, and maybe it took Charlie Watts's unfortunate uh, demise to uh, to get them together because you know Mick invited Mick invited uh, Bill and um, Bill said yeah definitely so it should be good the the track may also may have already been recorded um, they said that. It's in they. I think there's they're recording in California, and Mick and Keith were seen going in and out of Electric Land Studios uh, in the near the recent past, the recent you know, I guess a few months ago or whatever. But that's it. So uh, thanks a lot. Please subscribe. Please like. We're trying to build the channel as much as we can. If you have any comments, please let me know what you think about uh, this solo Stones uh, video. Thanks, and keep rocking, and stay safe. We're going to shut this off now manually. Take care. Bye-bye.